I'm going to hit you upside your head so hey, hard you won't even know if you're Canadian, Jamaica, Listen. Los Angeles, or what. I'm going to knock you upside your head, boy. <laughs> oh, so hard. Please try it. I'm going to hit you upside your head. You wouldn't know if you was Canadian. Next question. Canada? Yeah, thank you very much. You can't. Not for the pantomime. You're, you're enjoying real. yourself. Yeah. Not for the pantomime. This is my real. My pantomime fans were out there, man. I've got to yeah? keep them Where's sweet. your skirt today? I've got my skirt. Is at home, mate. Oh, I'm in suspenders yes, as well. Good. <laughs> Don't try that with me, because I've been in pantomime. You're just embarrassing yourself, so I would just pass it on, man, because I'll just ab you out You're a living embarrassment, sir. So I ab you out of here, boy. You're a living embarrassment. Yeah. I am a thespian, so don't mess with that. Well, at least, well, at least, at least I'm not a sellout as well. <laughs> don't just that. I, I, I've been in the business 25 minutes, and I know the business. <laughs> Well, that was some of the pre-fight aggro that had taken place between Lennox Lewis and Frank Bruno. But what did this man in the WBA and IBF heavyweight champion have to say about Lennox Lewis? Well, I think um, Lennox Lewis is, has yet to fight a guy who can punch like uh, Frank Bruno. And um, I think Frank Bruno, if he gets lucky, he can knock Lennox Lewis out. Lennox doesn't take a great punch. He hasn't been hit yet. And um, I think when he fights a guy like Bruno, um, that will answer a lot of questions. All the odds makers in Britain are making Lennox Lewis a very red-hot favorite to win. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, would, I would have to make him the favorite also, but um, I still think Frank Bruno, if he pops Lennox, he has the opportunity to, to become the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> You've got the reputation of being something of a mimic. Have you got a British accent off to a T yet? Can you do that? Not, not yet, but I'm, I'm going to work on it. Next time I speak with you, I'm going to have one and down. Len Lennox Lewis impersonation, do you do? Uh, yeah, I can do one for Lennox. Go on, then. <laughs> have you got a message for him? He's probably watching Yes, this. that's exactly what he's going to be doing when, when we fight. The thoughts of the other heavyweight champion. What about you, the public? Frank Bruno against Lennox Lewis. Who's going to win? Lewis. How? No, knock him out, won't he? <laughs> it's simple. Lewis. How? Knock out. The bat. Seven five friend. Bruno. Think he'll stop Lennox? I do. Lennox Lewis. How? I don't know. First or second round, a better boxer. Yeah, I, don't know what about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I think Len I think Lennox Lewis, quite honestly. And how's he going to win? Well, Lennox Lewis has been around a long time, and what Frank Bruno's got to remember is that the game has since changed. I mean, I mean, fighters are more hard. I mean, fighters. I mean, at the end of the day, to be a winner, you can't be nice to be a winner. It's got to be Lewis. Too powerful for him. I think. So you think you're stopping? Yeah, knock him spark out. He will. <laughs> Lennox Lewis. How's he going to win? Oh my god, I can't help you with that. One. Who'll uh, win? I mean, Lewis will win. I'd like to see Bruno win. Because he's English. He have a game's right English, is he? I'd like to see Bruno win. But he ain't got an earth, is he? What about you, sir? Lennox Lewis. What makes you say Lennox Lewis? I don't know, I just fancy. Well, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> As you're going to win. <laughs> uh, right comedian here, aren't we? Hey? Bruno. Well, you think he's going to knock Lennox out? Yeah, he's going to flatten him. You've got an opinion on Frank Bruno and Lennox Lewis, the big fight. Who do you think will win? Lennox Lewis. <laughs> Why? Hey, Bruno can't box. What about the big fight a week later, Eubank and Ben? Eubank. What makes you say that? Ben can't box. <laughs> uh, not to see Bruno win, obviously. Lennox Lewis. 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 I like to see him knock him. Fuck it! Lennox Lewis, whatever he's called. <laughs> Lennox Lewis. How's he going to win? I don't know. <laughs> In the um, fourth round by a knockout. Yeah. What about the Eubank Ben fight a week later? Uh, uh, well, I'm hoping Bruno do it. You're hoping, but do you think he will? Uh, stands a good chance, I think. Uh, Lennox Lewis. How's he going to win? He'll. Uh, I think it will take a while, actually. Five, six rounds, something like that, but I'm pretty sure he'll win. 
Louis is best his ass, man. Louis is better boxer, and you know that yourself, ain't you? You on Sky Sports, have you? Yeah. I thought I was going to see that. Who's going to win the fight between Frank Bruno and Lennox Lewis? Lennox Lewis. How? By knockout. Bruno. How's he going to win? Nothing like that. <laughs> Bruno, no, he didn't win. talking about between chalk and cheese. One's gone and one's coming on. Right, it's obvious who you think is going to win the big fight. Definitely who we know is going to win the fight. How's he going to win? First, maybe the second. You think he's going to come out and knock Frank clean out? Well, if Frank starts throwing his punch now, maybe he'll get there in time. Lewis. My heart says Bruno, but it's got to be Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis. Lewis. I think Frank Bruno, when they're too strong for him, aren't going to win it. Think you'll knock Lennox out? Yeah, definitely. Within round between eight and nine, I think do it. I hope it's not between eight and nine, because they'll be sitting on the chair. <laughs> Cardiff Castle, the venue for the win, which took place in pouring rain, just a stone's throw away from the Arms Park, the venue for the fight. Here's Ian Dark. He'll know exactly what his weight is, I'm sure. 17 stone exactly! I'd have thought he would be a little bit lighter than that. He really is Mr Cool, isn't he? Instant karma. 16 stone, 5 pounds! That's, uh, that's quite light for Lennox Lewis. Um, I've, that's my comfortable, that's my natural weight, 17 stone. When I wake up in the morning, you have been when I'm lighter trainer, before, though, haven't you? I have yeah. been lighter for um, different guys, but I want to be on the button. I figured he would come in heavy because he would want to use his size as, and his strength towards his advantage. He said he's going to hit you so hard he's going to send you back to Canada. That very, not a very nice thing to say, but... Well, he's trying to scare me, but I can't be faded. I think the main thing is, if I'm there to get hit, then he'll hit me. But I'm not there gonna, I'm not gonna be there to get hit. Frank, you will be knocked out, fight night. You will leave your feet, will put you to sleep. I may even bring a pillow to ringside for you. Big boy, you going. You must fall. You will fall. As fight time approached, the arms part began to fill up with an expectant crowd. But for the moment, we'll take a closer look at the two men who would later grace that ring. Both their careers have followed a similar pattern. First of all, let's look at the champion, Lennox Lewis.
all week in Cardiff, the rain had fallen. But as the countdown continued for the big fight, a second canvas was laid to try and keep everything as dry as possible. The undercar was complete, the crowd was nearing its 25,000 in the arena, but for Frank Maloney, manager of Lennox Lewis, he even had time for an ice cream. We were moments away from the fight. WBC World Heavyweight Championship. All I'm going to do, I'm going to let my fist do the talking. Frank Bruno, prepare to meet the worst nightmare. The last time two Britons boxed for the heavyweight championship of the world was in the bare knuckle days in 1876. Now, some 117 years later, everybody had turned out to witness history in the making. A host of VIPs were at ringside, not just from the boxing fraternity. And what a spectacle they were about to witness. Ladies and gentlemen, the Marquis of Queensbury Rules brought boxing into modern times exactly 100 and one years ago in 1892. Tonight, history is to be made because for the first time ever, two British boxers will contest a World Heavyweight Championship. And gentlemen, the challenger for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World, Frank Bruno! Bruno entering the ring amid fantastic theatre and fireworks at Cardiff Arms Park. Has to be said, in two previous attempts at this level, He's been found wanting against Tim Witherspoon and against Mike Tyson. Stamina has proved a problem in the past, but he's more relaxed now and more mature. And remember, he went 10 rounds last time with Carl the Truth Williams. And there's something of the showbiz star in Bruno now. He milks the moment. We await the entry of the champion, Lennox Lewis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis!
history in the making. Call it what you like, but it's tense and it's important, and this is big time sport. What does he look like to you now, Glenn? He looks very good. He looked very good when he was coming out. Very relaxed, very focused, as he always does. But he's noticeable. He's glistening, so it looks like he's done a good warm up. He'll have the Vaseline on already, which will make him, you know, which will keep him warm. But I think he'll have done a, a very good warm up one to keep him nice and warm, ready for a fast start. Against Tony Tucker last time, I thought Lewis looked so relaxed. I thought he was going to go to sleep in the corner before the fight, but he looks a bit more up, doesn't he, this time? I think he's going to have to be. I think obviously this is a, you know, a more nervous experience for him. It's a big British fight. He's got a lot to prove tonight. So I think he, mentally he will be very, very up. Chance of Bruno, Bruno. There's the tail of the tape. Bruno, the older man by nearly four years, three and three quarter years, 31 to 28. The taller man is Lewis, but the reach advantage by an inch is for Frank Bruno. The weight, interesting. Bruno, the second heaviest ever at 17 stone. He was uh, heavier against Kurtzer. And Lennox Lewis, 16 stone five. That's six pounds lighter than for Tony Tucker. He's probably trained for speed and mobility. Big plus points always for him. What about the rules for the fight? No standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is not in operation. That is, if there are three knockdowns in a round, it doesn't constitute an automatic stoppage, as in some other rules. The bell can only save a fighter in the last round, and only the referee, that's Mickey Van, can stop the fight. This is a contest of 12 three-minute rounds of boxing to decide the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. In the blue corner, wearing white shorts with red trim from Essex, England. The challenger ranked undisputedly number five by all world bodies, a former ABA heavyweight champion whose professional record from 39 fights reads 36 wins, three losses, 35 wins coming by way of KO, the former undefeated European heavyweight champion, Frank Bruno. Is this the night that the dream is realized for him? In the, the red corner, wearing red shorts with white trim from East London, the former amateur world junior super heavyweight champion, Commonwealth Games gold medalist and Olympic Games gold medalist. His professional record, he is undefeated in 23 contests, 19 by way of KO. The former undefeated British Commonwealth and European heavyweight champion. He comes to the ring tonight as the undisputed WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Well, a pretty good hand for Lennox Lewis as well. Not as big, At I the think, as the one for Bruno, but he's Bruno got lots of fans. Bruno scaled 17 stone, exactly 238 pounds. That's Lewis, Lewis's mum, Violet, 16 you saw at ringside. Stone, 5 pounds, 229 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Lennox Lewis, 16 stone 5. Frank Bruno, 17 stone. The referee, Mickey Van, age 49, who runs his own skip hire business in Leeds. The fourth time he's refereed a world title fight. This is the biggest night of his refereeing career by far. Mickey Duff, the promoter of Bruno, objected to Van after the controversy he was in in America in the Chavez Whitaker fight recently. That made the big headlines over there. Right, I don't take no shit off 
either of you. Shake hands, plenty of corners, shake hands with each other. And shake hands, right? Yeah, they shake right. hands reluctantly. Right, listen, just a minute, all right? You've not Don't give me no shit. Right. Oh, well, Nicky Van. Recoursing to the industrial language and just reading the right act of Pepe Carrera a moment. Well, there's a bit of uh, ill feeling there right from the word go. There's been quite a lot of hype. It's been a bit of a grudge match in the build-up and we're all set to go. Lennox Lewis makes his second defence of the WBC heavyweight title. Frank Bruno at 31 attempts to win it for the third time. Due to go 12 rounds, but will it? Over there, over there, over there. Round one, right to the barrel. And away they go. Bruno, you don't really need the identification in the white shorts. Oh, big sharp jab from Lennox Lewis early on, thrown with great hand speed. Lewis. On paper, the better mover of the two, and the jab was a good one. He's landed it three times already, Glenn. He's landed it, snapping out very well. He's, he's moving around as well, he's using that little bit of movement, and he's tried that big right hand twice. Remember how Lennox Lewis overwhelmed Razor Ruddock in a couple of rounds. He's looked a bit of a puncher in his last two fights. Bruno, for the moment. Just biding his time. It's a big moment in this fight when Bruno lands with one of his big bombs for the first time. Because Lewis's chin is largely untested. Already Bruno's gone for a couple of jabs to the body. That's a dangerous move because that's what cost Ruddick you know, the, the loss in that fight. Nice stiff jab from Frank. to start and there Lewis just slipping and losing his footing a moment in that corner Lewis has made the more confident start but he's got this way of holding his gloves pretty low by his side the head is open if you can time the punch and find the chin but uh, the reflexes are good too Frank's good he's took the center of the ring he looks very strong and he's using that jab well Lennox is moving around, just trying to get Frank off balance that little bit. Decent little right uppercut inside from Bruno there. There's no doubt about it, Bruno is trying to slow Lewis down. That seems to be a ploy by going for body shots. I think that's a... We've just seen Bruno with two good jabs, and that's a key weapon for Frank. He's got to have a good stiff jab. He's landed three times in succession with the jab, Bruno. He's starting to have some success. They're both good jabbers. And it uh, might be a key point in this fight, which of them is the more effective with it. There was some talk pre-fight that Bruno might be so fired up that he would come out very fast and maybe a little carelessly, but he always said that he'd take it coolly, and he did in that opening round. How did you score that one, Ben? Well, I thought that was a, a good... It was a very close round. They were both just trying to, to get it started. They were they were parrying for Romans, and it was, pretty, it was predominantly the use of the jab there. But Frank come off well with it, a very even round. That I think, just because Frank had the middle of the ring and maybe threw a few more jabs that landed, he could have stole that round. Frank Bruno's 40th professional fight in 11 years. Now, there's Lewis's jab. He was effective with it early, but Bruno came back quite well. He did, that's where we see. And that's where he got success, because he threw two. And later on in the round, he threw three. Lewis being kept warm between the rounds with a big blanket. 
second round for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Frank's keeping his own left hand pretty high after that jab. He obviously sees that big right hand from Lennox as a danger. Bruno, a mellower, more mature model these days. A man whose career has twice been threatened by eye injury. Bruno looks very confident in these early stages, occupying centre ring and boxing to an obviously pre-orchestrated game plan. Pumping out his jab. And it's not been a bad start, this, for Bruno. It's a very good start. He is very, very up for this. He looks as if he's very focused, and he's taken the fight to Lennox right from the beginning. But he's doing it sensibly behind a good jab. Only the 24th fight of Lennox Lewis's career, compared to the 40th of Bruno's. Bruno does have experience on his side. Lewis does have these periods in fights where he just seems to switch off and not do a lot, and that seems to be the case in this second round so far. Bruno's making the running. He is, but I think Lennox is catching the shots well. Bruno's sticking that jab over Lennox, is just parrying it nice with his own right hand. So he's keeping, he's using a good defence and keeping pretty elusive. Good shots from Bruno. Look to let that big right hand go there, Bruno. It didn't land cleanly. Left hook from Bruno with good hand speed. That's a good point. Frank is looking very fast in this fight. He started, he started very good very early and he looks very sharp. Well, he's certainly trained, I know, for extra mobility and flexibility. Two more jabs, chance of Bruno. Ring around Cardiff Arms Park. He catches Lewis again. Optimistic signs for Bruno. And the two of them there, clubbing away, and Mickey Van trying to get in between those two big men, 34 stoner heavyweight in there. And now Mickey Van wants to have a chat with them. Mickey Van looking to impose his control on the two of them. He's got to do that. These are two very big guys, and if it starts to get a little bit naughty, if they start to foul each other, it's going to become a mess. That was Bruno's round, I think. Definitely a very good round from Frank there. He certainly, he's very up, and he's really going for it. The big showdown between Lennox Lewis and Frank Bruno uh, about to enter its third round, and it's been a good start for the underdog Bruno. They take the wraps off Lennox Lewis again. Lewis in the red shorts. For those of you who need identification, I can't imagine there are too many. Lewis needing to just maybe reimpose himself in this round and starting fast. Yes, I think he's been told down the corner. He's been told he's got to take the fight to Bruno and he's done that a good double jab and right hand there are the scoring punches so far in the first couple of rounds 23 each it's close a good overhand right from Bruno did Lewis take that he looks in a spot of bother and Bruno looks to follow up remember how he had Mike Tyson going in the first round in his last attempt to win a world title that shook Lewis up a little bit but he's still there key moment in the fight that Glenn very a very good moment good shots from Bruno he's very sharp he's very fast and that took Lewis by surprise and I'm sure that did hurt him Lewis has got to fight back strong from this 
He's got to stamp his authority on this face. This is an excellent performance so far from Bruno. Can he keep this up? Lewis starting the round very fast, looking to impose himself. Bruno coming in with that crashing punch, and Lewis looked bothered by it, but he didn't go down, and he's still there. I think Bruno's getting the success because he's using his strength, he's forcing the fight, and he's using a very good jab. Good moments for Frank. There's a slightly worried look on Lewis's face at the moment. And Bruno, there's no doubt about it, is giving him a hard time. This is not the fight a lot of people expected to watch. Lewis is he's neglecting that jab a little bit. He's looking, I think he's he's a little bit um, perplexed by Frank's success, and he's trying for that big overhand right, rather than trying to came up with his jab. Lewis has got to get his own jab working. He's got his gloves down very low as well, Lewis, and he was caught by that right hand of Bruno's. He may be uh, dicing with danger a little bit with the guard that low, but a bit of showboating from Lewis there, just to show Bruno maybe that his confidence is still there. the biggest punch of the night so far in that one. Definitely a very good round for Frank. He, he caught Lewis with some good shots, a good double jab and a right hand, which give him the best success of the fight so far. And uh, he, the corn must be very pleased with Frank. Now let's see if we can see this punch again, this key moment. Well, he's using his authority here. He's very strong, he's taking it forward. There's the double jab in the right hand. And Lewis did shake a little bit. He just seemed to get on the tail end of it, but then we see Frank's strength, and this is what we were looking for. Frank to pull him around, use that strength. Now, that was always going to be a crucial moment, how Lewis reacted when Bruno landed with one of his big shots, and he was shaken, but you might say not stirred. I think that's a good description. He came back from a well. Fourth round. A confident start from Frank Bruno. But you feel that there may be one or two more twists and turns ahead of us. Fascinating stuff. After the midnight hour in Cardiff. Now, Lewis has been told by the corner, it's quite clear, to get working behind his jab more. Well, that was a key thing that he had to do, and he was neglecting to do that in the early rounds. He was not using that jab, and he was getting caught. Now he's starting to use it, and he's getting a bit more success. So the corner must have told him, and he's got to keep using it. It's a key weapon in this fight. And Bruno comes back once again and has success with his really good stiff ramrod jab. That's always been one of the big plus points in his weaponry. It's a battle of the jabs in many ways. The two of them looking to work other openings off the jabs. The, the, the jab is always a key point, and especially with these two fighters who depend on their jab. They've both got very good shots after the jab, but you've got to get your jab working and landing before you can land them big bombs. Neither fighter really is slipping too many of those jabs either. They're both uh, landing with a lot of regularity. Lewis is starting each round fast, but then rather switching off in the middle phases of the round. Bruno's been called programmed, stiff, robot-like in the past. But, I don't know, for me in his comeback, he's looked looser and, and better than the original model. And this is a good performance from him so far. So far, very good performance. But the big bombs are coming in from both men now. 
Lewis looking to get through with that right, but Bruno was wise to it, got his glove up well. I think there's a little bit of a mouse developing on Frank's side. It seems to be swelling up a bit, so obviously Lewis's, Lewis's jab, that very fast jab, is getting through. Lewis is a bit more mobile in this round. He's skipping backwards and sometimes out of range of the jab. In the last 30 seconds, a bit more. Well, he's getting his own jab going, and he's starting to double it up. Fascinating battle here. And four rounds gone. The way we're scoring this so far, just to give you a little guide, Glenn McCrory and I is identical. Two rounds to Bruno, one to Lewis, with one even. And our stats man, Bob Mee, who watches a lot of boxing, kind of agrees with that too. Harold the Shadow Knight whips off the blanket in the corner of Lennox Lewis. Mickey Van, the referee, very anxious to let everybody know that he is in charge. Here's a punch profile so far quickly for you. Lewis 49, Bruno 52, and Lewis complaining that he was punched around the back of the head by Bruno. Lewis, who in the build-up, accused Bruno of being a dirty fighter. But when people start complaining to the referee, it's sometimes a sign that they're not entirely comfortable with things. I think one thing I've never seen with Frank, I've never seen him this determined. He's very, very determined. Anything that Lennox does, he's coming back with something. The word the Americans like to use is focused, isn't it? And it, I think, well, sums he's up very Bruno. focused. Oh, that's good from Lewis. Two jabs and then a fast right hand, and Bruno ate all of those up. That really was a classy burst from the champion, but he needs more of that. And every time he does land, Bruno takes the shots and comes back. Again, Lewis is complaining about being held and pulled on the punches from uh, round behind his neck. This is a tough and close fight. It is very tough and very close. Both men giving it everything. But Lewis is having some tough moments. Frank is, is keeping control. He's still trying to force this fight behind that good jab. Well, so far, Frank Bruno is making a few people eat their words here. His jab is working very well for him indeed, but Lewis is having a fair amount of success with his too. Stamina and desire to win could become big factors, you feel, later on in this. This shows every signs of developing into the toughest fight of Lennox Lewis's life. That's right, we're going to have to see if this goes later into the fight, how the stamina of both men is, because this has been fought at a terrific pace. Good shot from Lewis, Ooh. beautiful jab. Lewis just upping the pace of it, he's done that twice in this round. Double jab, then overhand right hand. Bruno is keeping up a very, very high work rate, though. This is a good fight for the heavyweight title. There were some lovely cameos in that round from Lennox Lewis, but Bruno never allowed the champion to really wrestle the initiative in a big way, did he, Glenn? He didn't. He let, he let Lennox, he, it's very close, and Lennox is in the fight. And he let Lennox start using that jab a bit, and Lennox threw some good shots. But Frank came back, as we see here, this, over, this overhand right, a club and punch, and I think it's unsettling Lewis a little bit. But that was a, a good combination there from Lennox. He, that was probably his best shots of the fight. Good double jab with the right hand behind it. Five, 
Frank Bruno's had a little bit of a problem, possibly, with that left eye. It's just beginning to swell around the eyelid. It will be a danger for him if it started to close up because of that. Sixth round, live from Cardiff's National Stadium, and there's too much grease around Lewis's face. And Pepe Carrera is being told by Mickey Van, the referee, to wipe some of that off. There's still an awful lot on there. Sixth round, moving towards the halfway point here. And Lewis, his left eye is just beginning to swell up a bit as well. They've both taken an awful lot of jabs. Lewis, you get the impression, is looking to up the pace a little bit. A furious start of this round. And Lewis has really let the big shots go. Big right hand of the body he threw. Has Lewis got another gear, you wonder, that he's preparing to use? Bruno will certainly want to have got rid of the stamina problems he had early in his career in this one. Well, it's going to be a very interesting test because the fight's been fought at a terrific pace and it's bound to take it out of, of both men at the end of this fight. They're both going to be tired as the rounds go on. And then it's, then it's when the defences get slack and the big shots can come in from either man because they've both got terrific power. There's a little bit of blood around Lewis's face. I think it might be just seeping from a cut somewhere near his eye. We'll try to get a closer look at that. Nothing serious at the moment, but they're beginning to develop damage. He was cut against Mike Weaver, Lennox Lewis, and needed eight stitches. There's been a relentlessness uh, about Frank Bruno in this fight, though. It is. He's been non-stop. He's been walking forward behind that jab all the time. And I think that by pushing Lennox Lewis back, it's kept him off balance. But he's having a good, a good point here. Lewis looks more confident in this round, though, to me. He's just got that old arrogance back about him. That's right, Wilf. Well, he started to get that bounce in his step, and he started to come forward and push Bruno back. And I think that's very good for Lewis. That's what he's got to try and do. Lewis, the younger, fresher man. There was a low blow in there from Lewis, a right. Nicky Van steps in to separate them again. It's been a hard night for him. Bruno is so hungry for this, and he's making Lewis work so very, very hard. And again, Bruno there gets a little caution. There's no point deducted for punching behind the head of Lewis. I think there was no point deducted because Lewis dipped his head down. Well, I hope you're enjoying this live broadcast from Cardiff. It was uh, a long time coming, there was a lot of hype, but it's proving a very, very good fight, and Frank Bruno is producing one of the best performances, if not the best, of his whole career here. Six rounds gone, halfway point. I'm scoring the fight even, so is Glenn McCrory. This is the seventh round. They both have a little bit of facial damage. So far, we've got Lewis landing 84 punches and Bruno 83. We have an expert counting the punches as they're landed. Well, one thing's for sure, this certainly is a great heavyweight title fight. Look at Bruno here, coming up from the left hook, catches him, and Bruno was hurt by that. And now Lewis is looking to close in to finish this, and Bruno is in trouble. Bruno is in big trouble, and Lewis carries on a relentless assault here, pouring on the punishment. These are bad moments for Frank Bruno. Right uppercut, and I think Mickey Van's going to stop it. Or is he? He's called off the assault. Well, that was a contentious incident in the fight. I thought for a moment there, he was stopping that right uppercut. Lewis here, and Bruno is on the verge of going. He won't take a lot more, and this time, it is stopped, and Lennox Lewis is still the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, but Frank Bruno put up such a brave, courageous...
his performance. He was right in the fight until that moment when Lewis turned on the class and finished the job in clinical fashion. That really was very, very impressive. He's a great finisher, Lennox Lewis, and once he had Bruno going, he was never going to let him off the hook. Lewis is still champion. The Battle of Britain has been won by Lennox Lewis. Mum Violet can celebrate, but they'll have known some anxious moments in that before Lewis concluded the job. A brilliant finish from Lewis. Frank was just having, getting through with some good shots of his own, and Lennox showed real heart, real courage. He come out of the brilliant left hook and poured it all on. It some fantastic work there. And I'm just glad the referee stopped it when he did, because Frank was taking some bad shots. The left hook took everything away, didn't it? It was from, a fantastic, from, he let from, everything go with that one. Frank just stood, just caught it, bang on, a beautiful shot, and it was all over from that moment. Well, he's a strange performer, Lennox Lewis. Sometimes you feel he doesn't look that impressive at all. But when he moves into that higher gear, when he catches his man, his ability to get the job finished is quite extraordinary. Well, that left hook was the one that did the job because that knocked Frank right, you know, it, it shuddered him right to his shoes. Now, here we are. Let's have a look at it. Bruno. Oh, sir, Frank's got the success, and there it is, That's right it. on the chin. That was the one. Look at his legs doing a silly dance as it landed, Bruno. Oh, he never recovered from them shots. And Lennox, a beautiful finisher who pours it all on. He got the job done. I thought the referee had stopped it the first day. I'm not sure why he didn't wave it over then, what Lewis had done wrong. I think really why he caught him off is because Lewis was pushing his left glove into Bruno's face. And that's why he made him abandon the assault. But it didn't actually matter in the end. I'll tell you, Wayne. Lewis here, look, he's just picking the punch. All oh, that right uppercut. That really was the telling final blow, the right uppercut, rolled his head back like a rag doll, Bruno, and there was no way back from there. No way at all. You may be watching the last moments in the career of one of Britain's most popular fighters. But he, you've got to give all respect to him. He, he put up a marvellous performance. He was so focused, he really went for it. And if this is he swung some, then he did a great job, and it's a great fight to go out on. He showed nothing but courage. In well, Lennox Lewis, in, in the end of the day, a fabulous performance. The way he finished the job was quite brilliant, Lewis. But take your hat off, too, to Frank Bruno, because every time he has challenged for the world title, he has put up such a brave, courageous effort against Witherspoon and against Tyson. But you have to say, in the end, Lewis's extra, well, maybe it was punch power, told. That's the third time in a row he's... Uh, Landed with a big punch and finished off his opponents. Remember against Tucker, he had him down twice. Vital moments in the fight. Mayhem in the ring as always. Lewis has got dark glasses on. Bruno's got his wife Laura in the ring with him at this moment. And I'm glad to say that Frank is okay. That is good to see. George Francis with him. Three and a half million dollars or pounds, we reckon, for Lewis here. About one and a quarter for Bruno. Rough figures, you never hear the exact ones. But Lewis is still the champion. That's the bottom line in Cardiff. In the Battle of Britain, Lewis, in the end, was the one flying the Spitfires. Somewhere in there is Mike Goodall, and he'll give us the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, ten seconds of the seventh round, the referee has stopped the contest. The undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as he leaves the ring, your appreciation for a very well, a lot of people thought, or some experts anyway, that Lewis might just blast Bruno away. But Bruno's performance was heroic here. But 
take your hat off to this man Lennox Lewis because he is the future we long to see him in the ring with Riddick Bowe he perhaps still is not the finished article but in even a tough fight he finds the moment like that to get the job done and that's what it's about in the end he answered a lot of questions because that was a very tough fight Frank was having a lot of success and he showed you know, to me he showed a lot of skill and a lot of courage because he overcome some some you know some tough fighting and he came by with a beautiful left hook and then he piled the pressure on and to me it was a fantastic performance so let's go to Frank Maloney the manager of Lennox Lewis he's with Gary Norman Frank, that was a very strange start to that fight. I was a bit worried for Lennox at the start. Yeah, um, I just think there was too much pride up there. Both boys forgot their boxing. That was a real war up there. That was savage until we got Lennox under control. Did you under un underestimate Bruno at all? You must no, have. no, we never underestimated him. We've always said it would be a war for five rounds with his pride at stake, and that's what we saw up there. Frank, had, Frank got carried out on the shield up there tonight, and full marks to him. He sh he Prove what a better fight than we've ever given credit for. I think Lewis had to dig deep. There was a couple of times there he looked a little bit phased to me. I don't think so. He got caught with a couple of shots, but he was under control all the time. He was just trying too much with the right hand, not taking nothing away from Frank. It was probably a much better fight than any two Americans could have put on for a world title. And four marks to Frank Bruno and four marks to Lennox Lewis. And now it's Tommy Morrison. Hopefully, yes. Lennox, congratulations. You're still the champion, but a tough fight. Yeah, it was tough. Bruno was a lot tougher than, than I thought he would be. What are your thoughts about him now? Because he really did make it quite hard for you there for the first six rounds. Two of the judges had it even, and one of them had Bruno ahead. Well, it took me a while to get started. I went in there pretty cold, and he was pretty warm at the beginning. But I realized as the fight went on, he would slow down because a lot of his power punches were missing me. And then I just gained my, kept my exposure, and then and my speed came to work in the later rounds. And your punch power, yet again, was a, a vital factor. You, you're going down now as a bit of a puncher, which not everybody had you down as earlier on in your career. Well, Bruno did his, you know, he did his homework. He was watching out for my right hand. I threw, I threw some right hands to the belly, and then I realized that it, that slowed him up. And then I just threw my left hook, because a lot of people don't realize I've got a left hook as well. Just because every time I hit everybody with my right hand, they seem to go. Well, this time I tried my left hook, and it, it came out on top for me. There was a lot of grudge before the fight. A few bad words were spoken. What are your feelings about Bruno now? Because that probably was his last fight. Well, like I said, I don't keep no grudges. I don't hate Bruno. He gave me a tough fight. Enough respect to him. And your future now, it's Tommy Morrison next. What about that one? You want a bit of a, you want a, bit of a holiday first, don't you, though? Not really. I'm just going to keep busy, and I'm going to make sure that, you know, a lot of things I have to work on and just keep sharp. Let's have a look at the ending of the fight again, if we can. Round seven... Two of the judges have got it even, and it was a great left hook from you in there. Yes, this time is when I, I had him hurt. The referee stepped in. I don't, I don't know what reason he did. He told me I was holding, but I was throwing, throwing my right hand. And I just wanted him to hurry up so I can go and take out Bruno. Were you upset at that point because you had him on the verge there of defeat at that moment? It could have been vital, that. I was upset, but I realized he was still goggy-eyed because he looked in slow motion, and he, and he didn't put his hands up fast enough. So I took my time and I just wanted to land one right hand because I knew that would take his head off. It was only a matter of time at this stage, wasn't it? Yes. You know, he was, he was basically, he lost all his power and he was just hanging on. The ropes were holding him up and I just wanted to tear his head off. Tough, hard fight though. Were you worried at any stage there about the way things were developing? Not really. I realized as the fight went on, I just, you know, got more and more warm and I, I never lose my speed, my power still stays the same. As the fight went on for Bruno, he slowed down tremendously. You always gave the impression there, I thought, that maybe you had a gear to slip into. Definitely, I, you know, I always get warmer in the later rounds. Well, from the victor Lennox Lewis, still the WBC champion, to the vanquished and Frank Bruno. I've got to say, you took your heart and soul into that ring. Yeah. And you made a lot of people proud, Frank. You gave yeah. it your all. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you. Cheers. All the bad work is all the bad all the bad work is done now. All the bad words are finished with. Yeah. What you must have respect for Lennox. I've got respect for him, but I'm still going to sue him for calling me Uncle Tom. You know, I, I've got the greatest amount of respect for any boxer. After if I get beaten, if I won, I've got the greatest amount of respect. But I haven't got no respect for no one calling me Uncle Tom. But that is a separate item. He beat me fair and square, and good luck to him. On the boxing, there were a few moments there. You had him. 
reeling? Uh, very, very much so, but I can't really cry over Spike Milk. He beat me fair and square. I'm not going to make up no excuses. He beat me. You know what I mean? I'm a man. I can take it on the chin and say that he beat me fair and square. No problem at all. The big question everyone wants to know is what does Frank Bruno do now? I'm not too sure. I'm going to sit down with Laura, um, Nicola, Rachel, and just, you know what I mean, go over a few things. You know, talk to George and Keith and talk to my mum and talk to the man above and see what I'm going to do from there. I can't make no commitments now because I've just got to chill out for a little bit, you know. It's just, what, half an hour after the fight, you know. So I've just got to really, Gary, you asked me exclusive questions so quick, mate. Well, thanks for talking to us. You, no you did a lot Gary. of people proud. Thank you a lot of, much, lot of people watching Respect. were very happy. Respect, Respect for you too. Thank you very much, everybody. Owen Brown, Muddy Fox, everybody. The Bell House School for supporting me. Thank you. So Frank Bruno's record goes to 40 fights, 36 wins, 35 via the knockout. And whether he fights again or not, he will always remain in the hearts of the British nation. But for Lennox Lewis, another day dawned. The very next morning, at a press conference, he was the recipient of a jacket, courtesy of the MGM Grand of the new hotel in Las Vegas, where on March the 5th, he's due to fight Tommy Morrison. Thank you. Could this be the last time we see Frank Bruno in the ring? He couldn't possibly give any more to us than he has over the past 11 years as a professional boxer. Whether he fights again or not, his three attempts at gaining the richest prize in sport have been valiant ones, and they won't be forgotten.